Welcome everybody. Today we're going to be taking a look at the compound light microscopes. We're going to start with a quick overview on setup, how to get the microscope out, how to plug it in, turn it on, etc. Then we're going to take a look at the components of the microscopes, looking at what are the different important parts that we need to know how to use, what are they called, and what do they do, and things like that. And then with the last part of this video, we're going to take a look at using the microscope I'm going to start you out with the concepts you need to know on um, how to take a slide and find the specimen using this type of microscope. So we'll walk through all of that in today's video. So let's go ahead and we'll start with the setup, beginning with how to get the microscope out of the designated cabinets. We're going to start by getting a microscope out of the cabinets. You can see all our microscopes lo located here behind me in these cabinets. We can simply open the door by turning the handle to the right and grabbing a microscope is as easy as taking it first with one hand by the handle, putting another hand underneath it, the base, and carrying it with two hands just like this. Make sure you got the assigned number that you were given and make sure that matches with the cabinet. We should have numbers on the cabinet that match the microscope. If they don't match, let me know right away. When we bring a microscope over to the lab table, Go ahead and set that down. First thing we want to do is pull off the cover slip. We want to do that just nice and gently. Sometimes they'll catch on something, so just pull it off nice and easy. Go ahead and fold that up and set that somewhere out of the way. Inside your lab cabinet is a good place where there's empty room. Next thing we want to do is unwind the cord and plug the microscope in. Now in our lab tables, we have outlets on each end of the table. Make sure that the green indicator light is on. These are a surge protector outlet, so they will sometimes kick off. So if it is kicked off, click, click the reset button. Go ahead and plug that in, and then you should be able to find a power button either on the side of the microscope, as this one, or on the back of the microscope with some different types of models that we have here. The light should come on down here, and that's an indication that the microscope is working and ready to go. The next thing that I want to do is walk you through some of the different components and I'm going to give you a quick description of each of these different components and I want you to write these down and take notes on these so you can look at them later. The first component is the ocular or the eyepiece and these are what we look through to view the specimen. Now simple enough we look through them. They also however have a built-in magnification that can be different depending on each microscope but most often they'll have a 10x magnification. And you can actually see here on the microscope, um, on the ocular itself, there's a, a 10x indicator on there. What this means is that it not only is what we view the specimen through, but it is also part of the magnification path of the microscope. So I'll get into a little bit more of that. The microscope actually magnifies the specimen twice. That's why we call it a compound light microscope. We use visible light and it's compounded in magnification once with our objectives, which we're going to talk about next, second here with the oculars. And whenever we're using a standard ocular, it's going to magnify that by a factor of 10. Some oculars can have a higher power of magnification, for example, a 20x, sometimes even a 25 or a 15. So by standard, however, 10x is what you'll typically see. So when we look at the ocular, we view it, we, uh, so we look through to view the specimen, it's got its own built-in magnification. The last thing is, many of the ones that we have in our, uh, in our facilities are what are called binocular microscopes, meaning they have two eyepieces. Sometimes we have microscopes that are monocular, meaning they have only one eyepiece. Either way, they work pretty much the same way. The only difference with the binocular is that we can adjust them to fit the contour of our face so that we have uh, less strain on our eyes when we're looking through them over a period of time. For the most part though, when you're only going to look through them for 30, 45 minutes, an hour at a time, you can easily just close off one eye and look through one of the other eyepieces. You don't have to look through both uh, unless you want to fit that to your face and find that comfort zone where you can look through both eyepieces at the same time. If you're going to close off one eye, What's important to recognize is that one of these two oculars will have a pointer in it, a little black arrow that's designed to show someone else what you're looking at under the microscope as you take turns viewing. So that's the, the basic idea of our ocular here. Um, what we look through, built-in magnification, one or two eyepieces, that's the ocular. The next thing here are the objective lenses. 
the objective lenses are the other part of the magnification pathway. And for these types of microscopes, you'll typically see four different objective powers or uh, different types of objectives. So the objectives, what I want you to, to, to know about them, first of all, is that in general what they do is they magnify the specimen by their relative power of magnification. So the specimen is magnified just below where the oculars sit. And this is the first part of the magnification pathway. Now we've got four different objectives. We have a 4x objective, a 10x objective, a 40x objective, and a 100x objective. These are sometimes referred to as the scanning objective, the low power, the high power, and the oil immersion objectives. Now all of them magnify, but they each do it by a different power. So the first objective, the 4x, is 4x, hence the name 4x. So that means that it has a total power by itself of, a, of 4x, meaning it magnifies by itself 4x. The second one is 10x, 40x, and 100x. Now, what actually happens is we have the ocular power combining with the magnification power of the objective to give us the total power of magnification. So if we're using the very first objective, the smallest and shortest objective, what we're actually going to find is that the specimen is magnified four times when it initially hits the, the, the objective itself. That image, however, is passed up through the microscope, and as it passes out the ocular to our eye, it's magnified again by, in this case, a 10x factor. So what that means is we're going to get 4 times 10. By the time it comes out and hits our eye, we're looking at it at a total power magnification of 40x. So we're going to take the ocular power 10x and multiply that by the objective power to get what we refer to as the total power of magnification. So the first objective gives us to a total of 40x. The second objective gives us a total of 100x. The third objective gives us a total power of magnification of 400x. And the last objective gives us a total power of magnification of 1000x. Now all those magnification powers are based again on having a 10x objective. We can increase our power by adding a higher power objective, uh, excuse me, a higher power ocular. So those are the objectives. The next piece that we want to identify is referred to as the mechanical stage. The mechanical stage is this flat piece right here in the middle. And what it does is it moves the specimen up or down in relation to the objective to bring it into focus. So it, it moves the specimen up or down in relation to the objective to bring the specimen into focus. So to demonstrate that, I have a slide here for you. So the slide <clears throat> has a specimen located on it. And the slide is going to be placed right here on top of the stage. And the stage also has a stage clip on here, which we're going to pull back. That's going to let the slide slip right in there. We're going to push that flush up against the far side and let the clip go. And that's going to hold that slide in place there. Now, once we get that lined up, what we'll, next thing we'll need to do is we want to bring this stage up or down. The specimen will come into focus somewhere between where it's located, which is all the way down, all the way at the bottom. Somewhere between the very bottom and somewhere above that is what's called the, the focal point. The focal point is where the image comes into focus in the magnification pathway of the microscope. So what we're going to do is let that stage be our guide for bringing us up and down. Now to move the stage, one of the next components we want to identify are called the coarse and fine focus knobs. And these are what are located here and here. And on different models, we'll have two different knobs instead of one knob, but they will do the same thing. So the coarse knob is the wide part of the knob. And when we rotate that, what it does is it brings that stage up quickly. So the coarse focus knob is designed to move the stage quickly or rapidly. And the idea is it looks like a small distance to you and I, only a couple of inches there, but in a microscopic world, that might as well be the length of about two or three football fields in a relative perspective. So the distance between one inch and the next on a microscopic realm is extremely vast. What we're trying to do with this particular objective is cover that vast amount of distance relatively quickly. So we can bring that stage up and bring it down in a fast pace. 
Now, the coarse knob, or excuse me, the fine focus knob is the, the thinner, skinnier part of these two knobs here. Again, some of these have a separate, smaller knob, but the, the, the fine focus knob, it actually does the exact same thing. So it's moving that stage up and down, just like the coarse knob did, but you can't actually see it move, really. And the reason is because it's moving it at a very fine tuning pace. It's moving the, the, the stage very slowly or finely. And so what we want to do with that knob is, is use that to make more precise adjustments. So the coarse knob will get us from point A to point B quickly. The fine knob will get us there with much more precision. And so again, on a microscopic scale, the coarse knob is basically putting it into a high speed overdrive to get us there. The fine knob is getting us in a more uh, exact nature from one point to the next. So as we get to the higher power objectives, that fine knob becomes more and more important. Typically what we'll do is we'll use the coarse knob on the very first 4X objective. And that's because with the first objective, we have the greatest amount of space and the greatest amount of distance to cover that. So we can do that quickly. As we get to the higher power objectives, what we'll find, and I'll show this in the demonstration, the microscope lens will be right up next to the objective or closer. And then from there, we won't, we'll have already covered a greater amount of distance. And now what we'll just need to do is fine tune it with the fine focus knob. The next component is called the substage condenser. Sometimes it's called the condenser. The substage condenser is located right here in, in the middle of the mechanical stage. And this is actually where the light from the bottom of our microscope comes up through and it's gonna hit the specimen from our slide that's gonna be located right there over that condenser like that. Now this light can be turned up or down so we can get more or less light. You can really see it better there as I turn the light up. But what that does is it condenses light onto the specimen. So kind of like a beam, what we have is sort of a, a focused beam of light that comes into the condenser at, at a very unfocused, in a very unfocused manner and, and leaves the, the condenser uh, in a condensed beam right onto the specimen. So this takes a very sort of broad um, array of light and condenses it into a strong point of, of, of light for high intensity. So the next part here, I pulled that condenser off. The next part that I want to identify is called the iris diaphragm, or sometimes called the aperture diaphragm. And on this condenser, this is what the condenser looks like when we take it off here. You see it's no longer on the microscope. We have a little lever that should be facing out towards us that is able to open and close that, that light coming through the top part here that's gonna hit the specimen. So I'll put it back on here so you can see it again. But this little lever just moves to the left and to the right, and that opens and closes the amount of light coming through that condenser window there. And that allows us to control how much light is actually gonna hit the specimen and give us some control over the brightness or darkness of what we're looking at. So you can see now, as I move that, that lever left to right, the aperture diaphragm, the iris diaphragm, as I move that, that light opens and closes. And what we'll find is that a lot of times we actually don't need very much light. A lot of times we actually have the problem of having too much light, almost like looking directly into a light bulb that actually strains your eyes and actually causes you to see less and not more. So depending on what we're looking at, we wanna either close that light off to make it give us more contrast or open that light up to give us some more uh, more brightness so we can see things with more detail. It, it depends on what objective that you're on. Typically, as a general rule, the higher the objective power, the more light that you'll need. It's not a set in stone rule, this is a generality. And typically, when you're at the lower power objective, you'll typically uh, need less light. Um, the higher you go up in magnification, the more it tends to constrict light flow into the, to the objective. And so you'll tend, tend to need to raise that light up. But it's very much dependent on what you're looking at and somewhat to your eyes. And also it can just be adjusted because what you'll find is that as you adjust it, the contrast of the image changes. And so sometimes you can actually see the image differently at high and low light intensity. So sometimes you just want to change it, even though you have it in, in, in focus, to give you a different view of what you're looking at there. So that's a little important thing on the microscope to keep in mind. It's actually one of the most important components, and it also happens to be one of the most hidden, making it very unobvious of where it is and, and what exactly it does.
Now on some of these microscopes here, just to point this out really quickly, some of these, but not all, in our facilities here, have an extra have an extra light knob on the side. This is called the AM scope. These models uh, mostly have that that light dimmer switch. We can turn the light down or up with this dimmer switch here at the source of the light. So that's one way to control the light, but the best way to control it is at the condenser with the iris diaphragm. So you can play around if you have that extra dimmer switch there. Some of the microscopes don't actually have that, and that's because really the best way to control the light is right there at the condenser. The last thing in the components, we, I showed earlier, we have our slide clip that holds the slide in place there. So we place that slide flush up against this side, pull that lever back, and let that lock the slide in place. Now what that allows us to do is use the last component here, which is the mechanical stage knob. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow the slide clip to move left to right. If I rotate, there's a bottom dial here that moves the slide clip left to right. And I have a top dial then that moves the entire stage front to back. So in many cases, our specimen has to be precisely located directly into the path of our magnification pathway. Uh, well, it always has to be. It's just a matter of how easily that is done. Some specimens are big enough that they pretty much fall in that space by default, and other specimens are really tiny, so we have to really make sure to move them around to get them right in the middle where we're seeing things nice and clearly. So the mechanical stage knobs allow you to line things up left to right and front to back. If you're looking through the oculars while you're using these, Keep in mind that the microscope makes everything look like a mirror image. So if you're moving your specimen to the right under the microscope as you're viewing it, it's going to actually look like it's moving to the left. And if you're moving it up under the microscope, it's actually going to look like you're moving it down. So everything is essentially opposite, and that has to do with the way the image is magnified artificially through the microscope itself. Now, before we actually start to use the microscope, one thing that you might want to do is just make sure it's been cleaned and it's ready to go. We don't have any dust or any uh, debris on the microscope anywhere. So there's a couple different types of cleaning materials here. <clears throat> one is called a Kim wipe. Kim wipes or Kim Tech wipes. These are good for cleaning things like glasses or these are good for wiping down some of the eyepieces. The next we have are optical lens wipes. These are really good for wiping down the objectives, especially if we're trying to fine clean those. And the last thing we have are just some sterile alcohol prep pads here. We can use these for all sorts of things, but these are actually good for wiping down the eyepieces so that you don't have to share any germs from the previous user of the eyepiece or any other part of the microscope. So feel free to use as many of these as you need to wipe down the microscope. So wiping it down with a Kim wipe, and start with the eyepiece here and you just take clean the eyepiece inside around the outside and then we can take an alcohol prep pad and we can just sort of clean try to clean just around the out e outer edge of the eyepiece itself if you get it on the glass it's not going to hurt it you don't need to necessarily clean that with the alcohol though. <clears throat> okay. If we want to later clean the objectives, you can use the Kim wipes, but it's actually better to use the optical lens wipes. These have a much thinner texture. They're both pretty thin. Here's a Kim Tech here, and here's the, the uh, optical lens wipe here. They're both pretty thin. They're both going to be pretty friendly on fine lenses like glasses and things like that. But the optical lens wipe is actually just a little bit finer than the Kim wipe. So a lot of people will suggest to use those on the, on the objectives because they're a little more sensitive than other types of lenses. But if you wanted to clean one of those, you can, depending on how dirty they are, we can sometimes get some spray. Spray down our wipe and just wipe the objective down and then go back with a separate one and dry that up. 
So feel free to use as many of these wipes as what you need to. You may not have to clean these, by the way. These are not always necessarily dirty enough to be clean, but it's something to be aware of that you have this stuff in your tables, that these are designed to be cleaned with these types of lenses, these lens papers, and that sometimes we don't actually get a very good specimen because our microscope is so dirty. Other things that we can clean are the light source itself down here, and sometimes it doesn't hurt just to wipe down the condenser, the, uh, the light coming the spot where the light comes through the condenser there. One more thing I want to point out, the optical lens wipes can look a lot, on the surface anyway, like the bibulous paper, at least from the packaging and the marketing label. The uh, two are very different, however. Optical lens wipes, we talked about what that's used for. This is actually better for removing uh, liquid from slides. So we'll, I'll show you how to use this when we do our staining activity, but this is actually more for drying slides not at all meant to clean delicate lenses. So make sure that you're paying attention. You grab the correct one here with the delicate tissue. This is actually a much rougher, more coarse paper. You would not want to clean anything with that because you would cause all sorts of problems with that. What I want to get into next is how to approach viewing a slide with the microscope. Now, every slide is a little different. Every specimen is a little bit different. Every student tends to have a different level of experience. So I'm sort of addressing this, um, assuming that you have a hard slide, a slide that's more difficult to use, and I'm also assuming that as a student, you're less familiar with the microscope. So this will give you some sort of a, a baseline perspective on how to start with a microscope slide that may not be as easy as others. So the first thing that you wanna recognize, as I mentioned earlier, the amount of space that we have to cover with just within our specimen on a slide like this, just within the area where our, this little circle is, that's where our, our specimen is located within that little circle there. That amount of space is relatively large on a microscopic scale. So even though we can see it really easily with you know, our eyes, it's only a small area, under the microscope, we're talking about a, a football size uh, space, approximately. So if, what we, if we just put the microscope slide under the microscope and then start to look with our eyes in the, through the ocular, we're, essentially like trying to scan a football field on the ground walking from one point of the field to the next. Now we can find things eventually, but we might take a lot more time. What I'd like to have you do is just think of it as a bird's eye view, where we're gonna start by looking at the slide before we even put it under the microscope. And we're just gonna kind of see what we can see with the naked eye and where we might wanna focus when we do put it under the microscope. So what you wanna do is hold this up to the light, but you can hold it up and just sort of look at it, I'm trying to get it to focus here. Just kind of look at it with the naked eye. Every slide is gonna be a little bit different, but on this one in particular, you can see that little pink spot there in the middle of that circle. And so that is a good indication that there's something of interest to look at there. And so there's a lot of space on that slide, but only that one little spot seems to be anything of relevance. So before we just start zooming in or looking at a close-up perspective, what we actually wanna do is just take a zoomed out perspective first and get the bird's eye view, what I refer to as just simply doing the eye test. Now, when we actually go to put it under the microscope, the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna zero out the microscope by putting everything in its default position. So what this means is if it's not already, we want to make sure the stage is all the way down. So put with, with the coarse knob, bring that stage all the way to as low as it will go. Next thing is if we don't have it locked in place, we wanna load the 4X scanning X objective into place. They should also have to click into position like that. All of them will have to click in like that. Now, from there then, we went ahead and did a bird's eye view of our microscope slide. So we hopefully have an idea of what we might wanna look at there. The next thing is we're gonna load that slide into our slide clip, lock that in position. And with our mechanical stage, I'm now going to center that, that little pink spot we saw there, I'm going to center that right over the condenser where the light is shining through. Now, once we have that image centered, we've got the stage all the way down. There's actually only one thing left to do, which is to bring the stage up using the coarse knob 
going to bring that stage up. Now, what this is going to do is make sure that the image is right in the middle of the magnification pathway. Our, our specimen isn't off to the left or to the right or too high or too low. It's right in the middle, as best as we can tell from starting out. Uh, it also means that our focal point is out of alignment with the stage being all the way down. So to bring the focal point into alignment, what that means is that we're gonna to have to bring the stage up. Now, if the stage is somewhere in the middle, the focal point could be up or it could be down at reference to where you're starting. So when you bring the stage all the way down to begin with, it only gives you one direction to go, which is up. And you take some of the guesswork out of whether you're supposed to go up or down. So center everything, put the stage all the way down. You're starting with your first objective, the 4x or the scanning objective. That is by default where you'll always start. And then from there, we can now go ahead and put our eyes through the ocular. And we're going to bring up the course knob. We're going to rotate the course knob, bringing the stage up until our image comes into focus. Now, using a little technology here, we can run the microscope through a computer so we can see what's uh, under the microscope on the computer screen over here. So in a second, you'll see what I'm looking at. Now, I've got the, the image centered. I've got the stage all the way down. And so when I bring that up, if you're looking through the microscope, you're going to be seeing the image come into focus right about there. And I'm using the coarse focus knob to bring that up. And what I've done is I've found the focal point. I found this the point between the objective and the slide where that image is resolved or it's able to be seen clearly. So I've got a, an image now, and if I want to move it around, I will use my mechanical stage knobs to move this from side to side or from front to back, either way. So this allows you to kind of play with the slide to see what's on it and give you a better idea what might be immediately outside your field of view there. So depending on what you're looking at, you need to kind of scan around to find different things. Now, the 40X, or the 4X objective has a 40X magnification. For something like we're looking at here, these by the way are um, mold spores. These are relatively large. They could be much, much smaller. And so we can actually see them pretty well with the 40X objective, the, excuse me, 40X total magnification, the 4X objective. So you may not necessarily need to have much more magnification than that. But if we need more magnification, the next thing that we want to do is go to the next objective. In, in this case, it would be the 10x objective. So depending on your needs, you, you start with the 4x, you get it in focus, and then if you want to go higher, we will go to the next objective in sequence, which would be the 10x objective. We don't skip objectives, so we don't go from the 4 to the 40, or from the 4 all the way to the 100. We want to go in sequence. So the next objective would be the one with the yellow band, the 10x objective. So the other thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the image is, is centered in the middle of the screen here. So to show you kind of an extreme example of what not to do, we don't want to have the image way off in the corner or way off at the top like that. What's going to happen is if this is our field of view here, as we go up in objectives, the field of view is going to close in. So anything around the edge is going to be left out of our field of view. Now we can always go back and change it around, but it makes it a little easier just to make sure everything stays on track there. So keep your image right in the middle of the slide in the middle of the field of view and when we go to the next objective we just want to make sure that's in focus we can go ahead and rotate to our 10x objective now notice how the screen goes black it'll come back to light when that clicks in place there so we want to make sure the objective clicks in place if you're seeing a black uh, nothing black uh, either your lights not on or your objective is not locked in place now when I get to the next objective notice what's gonna happen here I know you can't see it as clear as you could if you're looking at it but the, the on the screen there the image is kind of there, but it's also out of focus. These microscopes are what are called parfocal. What that means is that when we switch from one objective to the next, the image stays in relative focus, but will need to be readjusted with each new objective. So that focal point has shifted a little bit, uh, enough that we need to make an adjustment, but not so much that we have to start over with each objective. So in other words, we can just make a slight tweak and we're back in focus with our microscope. So this is where we want to use the fine focal knob as opposed to the coarse focal knob. The coarse knob is going to get us there with the 4x. Now that we're there, with, we've passed the 4x, we're at the 10x, now we want to use the, the fine knob. So as I move that fine knob, see there in the top of the screen, that image is coming back 
into focus. I know it's not ideal to do it this way, but you can kind of see that image coming into focus there. So if I do that with the course knob, I tend to go too fast and it's hard to kind of fine tune that. You can do it. It's not to say that you can't do it, but that's, it's not meant to be used that way. And that course knob is really more for rapid movement with the 4X objective. Okay, so once I get that in focus, then I can see now with the total power magnification of 100X instead of 40X. So I'm two and a half times bigger. Now, if I wanna to go to the next objective, I need to just do the same thing. Center the image, move the next objective, click that in place, and refocus again. And now we're right on top of it. So we might have to move things around a little bit and we're really close to things. We're also recognized that microscopes provide only a flat two-dimensional view. This, I say this type of microscope because it's only a flat two-dimensional view of the object. In reality, the object has three-dimensionality to it. It has, it has depth from, from, uh, surface, from, from surface to, to the bottom. Okay? So uh, what's going to happen is the microscope can't actually see that entire depth all at once. It can only give you a layer-by-layer -layer view of it. So as I move the focus knob up and down, Let's see if you can see this a little bit better here. As I move this, you can actually see different parts of the image come in and out of focus. So I can see some of those back, the fibers sort of at the bottom there, and then I can see some of the fibers at the top and vice versa. So if I move around, if I move my stage left to right or front to back, I can find different parts of the specimen. And as if I move, the course knob up and down, I can see different depths of that specimen. See, this is a really good job. You can see all the way back there towards the bottom and then all the way up here towards the top. Yeah. It's often far from perfect at any one point, but that's what's happening there. So sometimes it's hard to know if you're in focus. And the truth is, focus is kind of a relative thing, especially with certain types of specimens. Some, some specimens are more naturally flat all across. This type of specimen is more of a cluster, uh, almost like a pile of sticks and, and, and uh, leaves, and, and there's sort of a top and a bottom, and so we can only kind of see through that in one layer at a time. So that's kind of what you're seeing there. Now, once you get to the, the 40X objective, I want you to notice how close we are to the actual slide here. There's very little space in between the slide and the objective, and that's the way it's supposed to be. As we back off to the lower objectives, we have more space with the 10 and a lot more space with the 4. But as we get higher and higher in objective power, we get closer and closer to the slide, and we're supposed to be there. So what you don't want to do is you don't want to lower the stage in, in, in fear of hitting the actual objective. As long as you're in focus with each objective when you make the next transition, then you won't cause any problems. The, the, the objective is meant to be right on top of it like that. Now the last objective is referred to as the oil immersion objective. And this is only used with really small specimens. So we don't need to use this very often. But what we do with this one is we actually will take and put a drop of oil directly over the specimen where that light's coming through. We'll put one little drop on that slide, on, that, on the slide, and then we'll click this, the objective in place. And what that does is it gives the microscope a little bit more resolving power by using the optical um, properties of the oil to suck in more light, so to speak. And what that does is it makes the resolution a little bit better, and that's necessary when you get to really high powers of magnification. One of the things that happens is that the magnification and the resolution are not always able to stay on, uh, on par with each other. You can go up in magnification, but you can actually start to lose resolution once you go up high enough. And so we can sort of grab that last little bit of remaining resolution by throwing a drop of oil on there. Now, in order for the oil immersion to work, we make sure we have to have the 40X objective in focus first. And if we're not 100% sure, then we need to get some help or double check our work or ask a lab partner to make sure that we're in focus there. So once we have the 40X in focus, the way we're going to use the oil is we're just going to rotate halfway to the oil immersion objective back here. And we're just going to leave some space there where we can get our oil onto the, onto the, the slide. So 
opening up that space, we're going to take our immersion oil. And I've got different bottles here. This is one that's put into a little dropper. Some of the bottles look kind of like this here. But it's a special kind of immersion oil. It's not just any kind of oil. It's got certain optical properties to it. So we got the image in focus with the 40X. We're going to rotate halfway to the 100X. And then what we're going to do is just we want to put one little drop. One little drop. Not like that onto the slide. And we don't want more than that. It doesn't take very much to get it done. So one little drop right where the light is coming through our condenser. And then we can go ahead and rotate that 100X in position and let that click. And now we don't want to move anything other than the fine focus knob, which we can adjust to bring that back into focus now. And so once again, our microscope is par focal. So I've got the oil on there and now I'm using the fine knob just dial that back ever so slightly and we can see that image coming back into focus there on the screen and once again we're gonna have different depth so I'm going to focus on different depths depending on what I'm looking at there as I move up and down but that gives us the highest resolution power that we can get the highest magnification power that we can get with these microscopes which is a thousand X with these particular ocular and so that requires that oil now the last thing is we want to make sure we clean that oil off properly if we're done with our slide we can take the objective, we can take the stage down, excuse me, and we can pull the slide off. Now, if we don't have any oil on there, we can just put that slide back where we got it and be done. If we have oil on here, however, with this, what we want to do is we want to get some of our cleaner and some of our special optical lens wipes. What we're going to do is we're just going to clean the slide off. I'm going to spray that. You can spray the wipe or you can spray the slide directly. And we're just going to get that oil off of there. Clean that up. The main thing there is just to make sure all the excess oil comes off. Oil kind of gunks everything up. And then even more importantly, we want to make sure that we get the objective clean. So sometimes some of these objectives you can rotate it out so we can get a better we can get a better position on it. And what you want to do is just wipe the excess oil off with a dry wipe. And then we can take it and either fold it in half and use the other part of the wipe, or we can just get a whole new wipe here. Go ahead and spray the wipe with the cleaner and then just clean that getting all that oil off of it. We don't want that let that oil sit on there. We want to make sure that that gets cleaned off so that we don't have any murky muddy kind of cloudy substance on that ocular uh, on uh, on the objective because that will uh, distort the field of view for the next person that goes to use that. So make sure you get it nice and clean. Use some cleaner Use as many wipes as what you need to, depending on how much oil and get that nice and clean. And that's it. Last thing is cleanup. What we want to do is make sure we take the slides off, put those back in their respective locations. We want to put the stage all the way back down in the 4x position or the 4x objective in position kind of like we started out then what we want to do is want to just really quickly take another alcohol wipe and a, uh, a chem wipe or you could even use an optical lens wipe rub down the eyes the eye pieces with the alcohol wipe and run this uh, also run that over the stage get anything off there depending on you may not have to do that if you didn't get anything on there but uh, make sure to just run that in case and then the uh, the chem wipes can just kind of clean those eye pieces up a little bit wipe the stage off and if you need to wipe that condenser lens off just a little bit last thing is make sure to unplug it wrap the cord back around and put the cover slip back on now the cover slip has a little point 
We also, we also want to make sure that the eyepieces are facing back towards the arm like this. We don't want those like that. So we want to make that more tucked in right there towards the arm. And then the tip of this cover slip is going to line up with those eyepieces just like that. All right, then you can ready to put that, you're ready to put that back in the cabinet using two arms right where you found it. Make sure you got the numbers matching and you are done for the day. You can go ahead and clean your table up. You can put everything either back in the table or back in the cabinets or back on the, um, back in the place where you got it. Okay, that's it for the video. Please let me know if you have any questions or any comments or if there's anything you need more clarification on. And lastly, don't forget about the online assignment that is over this video. You can find that in the coursework section of your My Neo Show lab page. Until next time.